Good afternoon everyone. Today we will be presenting our saturation flow rate lab. This presentation was created and prepared by Angel Vasquez, Jesus Gonzalez, Luis Guadarrama, and Aaron Ruiz. For our lab, we will be analyzing the purple highlighted far right lane of the northwest bound lanes of South Marietta Parkway Southeast. The data was analyzed and collected from our previous footage that we recorded at the peak hours of 4 p.m. to 5.30 p.m. on Tuesday, February 6, 2024. This map shows the exact location and angle of where we recorded our footage from. As mentioned before, our study point is the northwest bound lane of South Marietta Parkway Southeast. We specifically analyzed the intersection of this road and called Parkway Southeast. The primary objective of determining saturation flow rate in this lab is to analyze the efficiency of our study point signalized intersection. In ideal traffic conditions, we observe the delays after the fourth vehicle in the queue. Determining the lane capacity is important for us to calculate max and effective green times. It is also important to calculate cycle lanes at the signalized intersections. And all of our data can be collected to determine if capacity is enough for existing demand volumes. Our group collectively worked together to collect the footage of our project study point. Angel then went through and collected all raw data from the footage and prepared our discussion. I went through and created our introduction, objective, and effort statements. Jesus analyzed the results and Luis produced the conclusion. The average effective green time was found to be 50 seconds. On the other hand, the cycle length was found to be 170 seconds. What this tells us is that traffic from the intersecting road is greater than the traffic on South Marietta, since the effective green time is longer. It is important to note that the green light on South Marietta includes a protected left turn arrow for the first 15 seconds that is not found on the eastbound side. A similar study from the University of Idaho showed that an intersection with a headway of 1.9 seconds runs at a capacity of about 1,900 passenger vehicles per hour per lane. This is the case for our saturation flow, which was found to be 1,703 passenger car per hour per lane. However, the lane capacity at the intersection was found to be about 700. The lower capacity indicates that there is a lower volume of traffic compared to the north and southbound traffic, so in turn the effective green time should be lower, which it is. In conclusion, all of our data seem to fall within the typical ranges provided by the design criteria. Starting with saturation flow rate, from our data we got a saturation flow rate of 1730 vehicles per hour, which is on the very low end, just above the minimum range of 1700 for uh, the saturation flow rate and the high end being 2000 vehicles per hour. The startup delay is typically in between one to two seconds and we had an average of 1.5 seconds, though at some points we did have a startup delay all the way up to 3.5 seconds and that was due to the high influx of traffic at the time. The demand volume for our intersection was 600 40 person cars per lane per hour which was obtained from lab 2 and our lane capacity was 700 person cars per lane per hour so the capacity does satisfy our demand volume now the clearance interval is the portion of where all the lights are red also known as a all red interval and from our data we did not see any cars using this uh this interval, which means there was no cars passing through when the, all the lights were red. Uh, this is this concludes our presentation. Thank you so much for sitting and listening to us. This slide provides our references for this saturation flow rate lab. This concludes our presentation. Thank you for your time and have a nice afternoon.